Well, so let's start the discussions. I have in the studio um, the Deputy Minister for Water and Sanitation. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much. Good morning to you and your viewers. Okay, he's Patrick Yabwama. He's also the Member of Parliament for Okainkwe Central. Thanks for uh, Thank your you. time. Now, uh, we'll, let's straight away go into the discussions. There are a number of stories about irate youth attacking a Somanya police station, but we also know that uh, the, the youth had earlier on vandalized property belonging to the ECG. And uh, there's been a cop shot by a patrol team, of course, mistakenly, but somewhere in the central region. Uh, a gentleman, apparently, uh, who is a head of uh, a, a brigade or perhaps a platoon of the Ghana Army that uh, supervising activities there, um, was going jogging, we're told. Uh, he had his pistol strapped along, alongside his waist, and they mistook him for an armed robber, we're told, allegedly, or whatever it is. Just also lynched or mopped, and he's dead. Uh, some state of lawlessness among uh, young people or the youth or communities, wouldn't you say? Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to you. And um, it's an unfortunate situation. It's not a pleasant news uh, to hear this morning that um, the youth of so many, uh, those around uh, Dentra or Boise, and some parts of the country have decided to take their law into their own hands. One, when you talk about the Somanya issue, they have structures in place for complaints and for redress to be made. So for the youth to go to the police station, to the extent of even breaking into the cells and releasing inmates, it's, clear, it's a clear violation of the laws of this country. First and foremost, the police are supposed to maintain law and order. And if the police doesn't take the necessary steps to show that they are truly in control of con protecting uh, life and property, then it will send a wrong signal as a weak institution. And I don't believe IGP appear to the CID boss, uh, Brito Drew, and the interior minister who want such an attribute to be put before their doorsteps. They ought to tell and show the good people of this country and the world, especially the investor community, that we have a strong internal security system that protects life and property, and that they would not condone any acts of violence from the youth or anybody from any quarters. Otherwise, this thing has gone viral. It's online. Everybody has read it. If I'm coming to invest in this country and I read these things, I will not come because I'll feel that my life will not be protected. When there's a problem, the youth can easily come after me and kill me, go into the police station and release inmates. Out there, the police have the power to invite a top politician on anybody at all in society to come and write a statement. But is the police in this country very confident at doing that? The answer is no. Why not? Why, why, why aren't they? It's a question we, I guess we all need to be asking. I don't, I don't understand because they have been given, if you read our criminal laws, they have so much power that sometimes it amazes me what a policeman can do. Is it because of how they've conducted themselves in the past that has led to the erosion of uh, uh, people's respect or public respect or confidence in them. It has got to be repaired. It has got to be repaired immediately. The soldier who went on jogging, unfortunately a captain, uh, was attacked by uh, people in Denchobwase for the wrong reasons. If the report that I've uh, read or listened to is anything to go by, I, I was about listening to the Minister of Defense because the military has issued a statement. And, uh, but I entered the studios, I couldn't hear exactly what the Defense Minister, I believe he's been briefed and uh, we are all going to listen to exactly what led to the death of the young man, the captain. But. Dentra, Obuase is not too far from Obuase. Uh, Obuase 
it, though it's in the central region, you can connect through Obuasi and get there. I don't think there are people who are of, who don't understand the workings of society. Because I'm told he went on jogging and asked some ladies uh, for some direction. And because he had a, a pistol strapped on him, they, they thought he was an arm robber. How can you come to such a conclusion? Because previous, the previous days, some people had gone to rob some people over there. I'm told he led a group of soldiers for, to undertake an operation out there. But um, the youth, the citizens of this country have got to understand that we are in a community that requires some patience and understanding in a lot of things. Otherwise, law, when law and order breaks down, we wouldn't have a society. Roland, we wouldn't have a society because I'm so hurt by the happenings and uh, these are the youth that we are saying will take over this country. So for them not to understand or abide by due process, it's worrying. At, at what point should the police have taken action? And uh, what were some of the powers that were inherent in the police that they could have taken in terms of the actions that they could have taken? You see, police are supposed to preempt and anticipate violence because of the intelligence network that they have. So I believe some of these things, they may be in the process of gathering information. You wouldn't have concluded your investigation and uh, they will come and jump on you. I, I don't have the true, the real facts as to the level of inf investigations or intelligence that the police, the CID there had gotten. But they should be proactive, they should be firm, they should take decisions and damn the consequences. Because if you don't take action, then the irate youth will come after you, which is unfortunate. Yesterday on social media, I was reading that uh, we seem to have a certain history to the activities that are happening because it's been psychologically ingrained in the minds of communities and, and, and the public that you can take whatever action and you can go away with it. Uh, we've had a um, group of young people go into a court to go vandalize the place, and so, so, even though, of course, we've had uh, some pronouncement on it from the court. It seems to send some um, images in the minds of the public that, well, the worst can't happen to you. It has to be reversed, Roland. It's unfortunate that uh, we live in a de democratic society and people have that mindset. It's, it's even wrong. It's even wrong for us to inculcate that uh, attitude that we can go and take the law into our own hands and believe that nothing will happen to us. Why are we paying people at the end of the month? Why are we sewing uniforms? Why are we asking, sending people on training, CID training schools? Uh, police academy, police patrols, whatever. Why are we investing in that? Are we, do we, are we saying we have a weak police system? I don't think so. So the interior minister, the police hierarchy must show the force of the police in stemming some of this. Otherwise, when it spreads out, and everybody feels they can do anything and go uh, untouched, then we have a problem. Nobody will take this country serious. And um, Roland, it's very unfortunate that this thing has happened. Mm. Well, we have a correspondent, Ohim Interior, uh, that we've deployed to the town to also take a look at what really uh, has been uh, happening. And uh, he sent us uh, some pictures uh, as to gauging the mood and the atmosphere of the community. And we'll be relaying that to you shortly. Where and is that? 
uh, this uh, Dintra Obwasi. It's just a normal community yeah. uh, you can find in the countryside, and it's a farming community too as well. And uh, well, you wouldn't think that something uh, something like this um, would have happened there. Uh, we're told that you can visibly not see people around. I believe that uh, uh, personnel of the army were stationed there as a result or perhaps may have stormed some areas in the town to try to also do their own reconnaissance activities following the incident. We're told um, the late captain, uh, late captain Mahama was jogging at the time and uh, well, seemed to have been lynched. Mistaken identity it was on the part of the citizens of the town. Very unfortunate incidents there. You wouldn't think that if you travel uh, along many communities uh, across Ghana, you wouldn't think that something like this, as subtly as uh, he was just jogging, uh, he could have had his uh, identity mistaken and, and subsequently lynched to death, mobbed to death. Somebody who had uh, a lot of life ahead of him. Very, very sad. We found the army also issue a statement on the subject. And of course, earlier on, we shared that with you. So when Ohim Terrier is on the line, we'll speak to him. But uh, let's get on to a subject about the, atten the Auditor General apparently uh, to retrieve all stolen public funds. But uh, a 16 member committee has been put together. Is the story on page 17 in the graphic says that um, the, the Auditor General says uh, the committee is made up of um, accountants, lawyers and is mandated to trace all persons who have been cited in the Auditor General's report for, I believe, uh, 2013, 14 and 15 or so. Um, what do you make of this? Well, um, it's a good step. The Auditor General under Article 1877 yeah. is required to retrieve all misappropriated state funds through civil action. So the Auditor General can take that step and help recover those uh, monies that have been misappropriated by public officials. The Attorney General will then have to pursue the criminal aspect. I believe that is what the uh, at, um, they are all ages, Auditor mm. General and Attorney, well, Attorney Gen General yeah. uh, are seeking to do. Mm. It's a good step. Very often, uh, fingers are pointed at politicians. Mm. But if you go deep, you find that there are other public servants who contribute to corruption. And I believe whether you're a politician or public servant, you owe the good people of this country a duty to manage the funds that are put before your ministry or institution or agency effectively and appropriately to ensure that there's good use of public funds. So going back to 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, with a team that he says he's put together, it's a good idea. The public will be watching, will be looking at the steps that he's going to, be, uh, he's going to take He's got to be fair. He's got to give everybody the opportunity, even though the report is before him, so that he doesn't suffer any uh, defeats in court. We want him to employ the best legal brains to assist his institution to help recover some of the monies. I'm sure some will come for settlements. You have to get good lawyers to do proper negotiations so that it, we don't end up uh, <laughs> losing so much because you must have people who have the right negotiation skills to uh, settle some of these matters for you. He's saying he's going through the civil aspect. That's why I'm talking about settlements mm. because mm. it's allowed. Yes, it is. But he has got to employ the right people to undertake such uh, uh, activities. Once that is done, once a public servant comes to say that, hey, I stole, I, I'm, or I misappropriated funds, and makes uh, the request to uh, refund, 
It's an admission of guilt. That is where the Attorney General comes in. And that once the state has been able to recover so much, then uh, the AG's office will take up the criminal aspect mm -hmm. of the matter. So uh, I commend the Auditor General for the bold steps that he's taking. Uh, my colleague Neil Ante Van der Poy will be joining, will be joining right. us. He's a member of the Public Accounts Committee, I know for sure. And they have a lot of work to do to save the public press. That's my opening comment on this story. Mm. Well, we'll see how that goes. But at the end of the day, um, I have consistently covered Parliament over the years. And, appoint, and the Public Accounts Committee, uh, of course, makes great spectacle and, and informs the public on its sittings and, and its actions. At the end of the day, also compiles its report. But um, how do we go further from here? Um, or what could we have done beyond the, just setting up a team to retrieve so-called monies that perhaps uh, people may have embezzled or may have uh, been in the pockets or in the coffers of individuals and corporations? I think in one of the laws, I think the public administration laws, one of all these regulations, the CJ is supposed to set up a court to try some of these things that the public uh, accounts committee uncovers. So the processes are set out, the rules are laid down. Mm -hmm. It's about enforcement. Because the Public Accounts Committee, they don't have prosecutorial powers. They are a fact-finding uh, committee mm -hmm. set up by the Speaker to assist the state. That is why it's always chaired by a member of the minority to ensure that there's fairness because uh, you wouldn't want to have a member of the majority chairing such a committee. Uh, there will be so much suspicion. So it's always chaired by a member of the minority, and they do a thorough job, present their report, and the necessary steps ought to be taken. So if in time past those steps have not been taken, then it's unfortunate. It goes to enforce and embolden uh, public officials who do not want to respect laid down procedures. Mm. This is why we always complain about the procurement processes, sole sourcing, restrictive tendering, and what have you. But if they knew that you, had, uh, you have a court in place to try them, to ensure that they adhere to procurement processes and procedures, we wouldn't be losing so much year on year, uh, year on, and uh, only to come back and say that we are setting up a committee to go and retrieve our monies. <laughs> It's just a uh, uh, round robbing kind of activity. But in the same vein, the it's Minister a good of State. Start. Yes, the Minister of State in charge of uh, public procurement, uh, Sarah Asafwa, uh, Ajwa Safo, seemed to be accusing a former NDC administration of using sole sourcing under the public procurement law to have looted state funds. And according to her, apart from the award of contracts to friends and cronies under dubious circumstances, suspiciously, most of the contracts were also inflated as far as the pricing were. Well, addressing a program to train ministers and other public officials on procurement, Joseph said her office is in the process of reviewing all such contracts and advise government accordingly on what steps to take. I must assure you that under the watch of His Excellency, the President, Nanado Dankwe Kufuadu, and the Vice President, appropriate steps will be taken under our tenure of office to stop this wanton abuse of sole sourcing as a method of government contract. We are compiling a list of all ongoing contracts and projects with all government institutions in order to advise government whether or not to proceed or abrogate such contracts. Again, number two, investigating the procurement processes and procedures that each procurement entity went through before awarding government construct, contracts to any public sector person in order to ascertain the level of compliance. Three, my office will come up with a policy document on 70% of government contracts or projects for our local companies or industries and also ensure that 30% of that 70% goes to women, companies owned by women, persons with disability, and the youth in employment. This was a manifesto promise that we made to the people of Ghana before we took office. 
and my office would make sure that we, we would um, implement these policies to the best of our abilities. Well, so we have been joined by the Member of Parliament for the Dudu and uh, uh, former Minister uh, uh, um, for uh, Sports. And um, um, thanks for joining me, Neil Ante, from the boy. Thank you, Roland. My it's former boss at JP City. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. Mm. But we're talking about, um, first we talked about is the level of, um, um, I, 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 I don't know, the, the level of uh, lawlessness among you young people in commu among communities um, because then there have been a string of incidents um, a police station was attacked in Somalia because the police personnel at the station arrested uh, some irate youth who had also vandalized property belonging to the ECG because those uh, irate youth were not happy with services rendered by the ECG substation in the area and in the same vein we've had for several months back some lawlessness across the country and also just uh, we're, we're here in the last 24 hours uh, a young captain captain mahama was also mobbed or lynched somewhere in dentra or Boise. Um, what do you make of uh, this seemingly state of uh, uh, people putting or taking the law into their own hands and doing what they like well thank you very much and first let me say good morning to your viewers and also good morning to you and to my brother patrick um, let me apologize for being late. I, I, I set out as early as 5.30 in the morning. I've spent oh, really? close to two hours in traffic. It's amazing. The traffic on the Botiano Road. Mm. Should have more highways. <laughs> or, 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 or well, yeah, maybe trams will do. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Nanado will be looking at trams, possibly. Um, first, let me say it's unfortunate that these things are wearing their head once again, especially with Somania. Um, Somania has been a very quiet, much more disciplined town. You wouldn't hear such things happening in Somania. Not only in Somania, in the Krobo area, such things do not happen. And as such, I was surprised when I heard that um, the youth of the town have expressed their anger and displeasure about the performance of the Lissue Company of Ghana uh, in that manner. And I believe that in one way or the other, the security people were not too proactive. You see, one thing I have learned under crowd management is that when the thing happens and you want to react immediately to what happens, sometimes it brings problems. You mean you incense the crowd? Yes, you see, because when the thing happened, when I was monitoring, it happened. So then what you do is that you calm things down. And then the police will then take measures to effect arrest later on. But that's the crowd has dismembered. But in their group form, when you want to react to the situation at that time, you get reprisals from them. And I think that is what the police missed in that circumstance. Two, um, the person who is deemed to have led the people is well known. Mm. You don't need that particular moment in time to arrest the person. Once the guy is the leader or the agitator or the person who incited them, once he's picked, you, you get the people to react immediately. But on the quiet, from what the police normally do in such situation in the past, is that when you are least expecting that you'll be arrested, then they pick you up. Before your members will get to know that you've been picked, there is already, a, 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 let me say, a reinforcement to make sure they thwart any effort by the people. It's unfortunate. With the soldiers on, there is mixed reportage, and as of now, we will not be able to conclusively say that what the people were saying is true or not. The people are saying that they mistook him to be an armed robber. As to where it happened, whether they've been a precursor to that one, you will not know. Uh, but we are, we've heard that this morning the Chief of Army Staff and then the CDS themselves are going there to see to it that investigation, proper investigations are conducted and then we can conclusively say what really happened. But I can say it's unfortunate. The issue of mob action is becoming too rampant and also people's desire to to 
do things their own way is not is not good for this country. The image of Ghana is so so important that said things you no know, but it all comes to one thing. When some of us were talking about what happened in Kumasi, people thought we were doing politics. And Patrick here will tell you that I don't do politics with certain things. And, and, but then I, I, I thought that the way the public prosecutor's office handled this data forces issue in Kumasi set a bad precedent. So it's just one incident. You see, one incident, but you see, it is only an incident that gives example to others that you can go scot free you, yeah you can you can just go in there and do what you want to do you see i don't even have a problem with the 13. i don't have a problem with the 13. the 13 whatever they did was more party related so the party could take the decision or the police could do that but then it could be but then for you to have trampled upon the courts of just of course of law, the way the eight did. They should be punished more severely to act as a deterrent to others because they are attacking the whole institution of the judiciary. But the guys, the 13, attack a personnel, a public officer. And that could be looked at. Because I saw them uh, 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 giving, uh, let me say, statements of remorse. You saw the, the 13 oh. people begging for them and all this. By the eight, we can't find them. We don't know the eight. It, it's, it's difficult. That is that is the problem. That's the problem. You see, today it has happened in so many too. People have just got broke into a JSL, free the people, and I learned two of those people are hardened criminals who have been referred to, have been remanded, and they've been kept in that custody. Do you know what will happen? What is the guarantee that if it has happened in Somania, it will not happen somewhere else? And I started this thing and I said that Somania, hitherto, was not a town noted for these things. So if a town like Somania will get to this level, then who knows? And Nima. I have not mentioned it. And your place. No, I grew up in Ashama, so I can. <laughs> and Nima. And no, then no. your constituents. <laughs> your constituents. <laughs> We don't fight. <laughs> okay, no fight. <laughs> you know, we don't fight uh, no, no, you see, but you see, places like Odo, Dodo, Dodo, Abeka, those places, you can't do those yeah. things because they are in the city center <laughs> and uh, the proximity yeah. to the highest authority of Fair. police service and things. So, to be no, it's, it's, not, it's not easy for you to do those things, but in places where, like so many, where you have close about six, only about six people. At the police station. And Bekan, do you do? Which place is closer? But don't we have more problems? Oh, you know the police depot. Street. Is, the, no, the, the police depot is just here. Uh, yeah, and so if you are in Fadama or Abekan, you misbehave. They can just get a whole. The depot is only trainees who are there. They, they are oh, even more, oh. they, they can be even more serious uh, than. Um, Amoka <laughs> Squadron, uh, they are there. And okay. you know, those areas, police training depot, CID institutes, institution, the, the command area has. They are all surrounded by police station, La Paz mm, Police, yeah, yeah, Tessano yeah, Police yeah, Station, yeah. Mile 7. There are all police units around. So it's always difficult for them to take the law into their own hands. Yeah. Mm. So the incident, uh, let's say, at Denture Obasi, for example, mm. uh, an innocent um, soldier, just uh, mistaken. No, the difficulty I'm having now is we've known the army, the reaction. I'm not thinking about what has happened. I'm thinking about the reaction. Oh, they don't do anything. We're now in a democratic <laughs> mood. <laughs> democratic I hear they've been to it. All, everybody's lost, though. <laughs> <laughs> they are all missing. Why are they lost? A <laughs> <laughs> correspondent on him interview has said that, Charlie. Why? Why? Uh, what is missing? missing? Women, women missing. are being run into <laughs> the Yes, they are, they are all running okay. to the... You know, they are surrounded by palm... Um, to I, I, I want to look at the other side of it, not only the issue what has happened. Why are the a soldier detachment there? They are there to forestall the gallantry. Mm -hmm. And these are people who are involved in gallantry. Mm. You yeah. understand? Yeah, yeah. So there are things that we need to look at. Just not the issue of this. Oh, yeah, they mistook yeah, yeah, him to be an yeah, arm yeah. robber or things. No. Because, because once he's stationed, it means he, he, he would have been known, right? Yes, 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 yes. yes. Could he have just yes. been somebody yes. who came yesterday? And it's and not, so the next it's not just a soldier. It's yeah. a captain. Yeah. And, you know, he's one. I kept wondering, what would he go jogging with his 
Thistle. Unless he found that, he thought no, no. that the place was dangerous for him. Every, every Galamsey area is it's now dangerous. a security threat. You know, you, 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 should, you should at least heighten the security caution there because of the the, the, the tax force work and whatever do every Chami, every galamsey operative every galamsey operative will, 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 will see the police and the soldier no more as a friend it's unfortunate what happened is unfortunate and and you see my this is that when you mistook him to be an arm robber and he was hit by stones and you got there and you saw that he wasn't not just stones cement blocks yeah, so so na, uh, no, what I'm saying that at that level where you got you got him, he was down. So it's why did you? Then why do you have to, to burn him? Mm. They even bent him. Yes, according to the report, he was even bent. Well, I just got a message from my little sister. She's a nurse at Obuasi. She just told me that she, she took care of him and she knew him very well. So it's somebody that's known in the area. Yeah, because if you work around. Uh, Dentra to Obuasi is about 30 minutes, 40 minutes drive. It's not far. And most of the referrals are mm -hmm. made to the Obuasi hospital. So she just sent me a message, and it's very unfortunate it's fair, it's for you to kill a human being in such a manner. You must be, you must be a, a very callous person. Callous person. Mm. But that, that brings to, but the, the, to, to the fore that. Um, all this fight against Galamsey should not be taken lightly. Because there are forces because, who will... Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. Because these guys are desperate. These guys are desperate, and they will do whatever they can in order to, to, to uh, secure and to continue to... You know, because a lot of them are sensing danger tomorrow. If I'm thrown out of this, what am I going to do? How am I going to survive? Mm. And, and survival of the fittest sometimes becomes a problem. And they will do anything at all in order to continue perpetuating what we want to stop them from doing. So we should not take it lightly as we fight in a normal situation. Yeah, we, it, 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 all the we're soldiers. We're not just fighting normal flesh and blood. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the soldiers and the police and all involved in this should know that their li very lives are at risk yeah. at every point in time. And so, like this soldier, there's maybe. Tomorrow, if any of them want to go on a jogging, it shouldn't be one person. They should go in a group or they should just do a normal exercise together. Um, because this is unfortunate. And I think he did not really... He underestimated the people in the area sometimes. Sometimes we underestimate these people. Then Are you sure he didn't know the people who... Some of the people who came around? Anyway, but uh, let's move on to a subject. And we know that... I'm told you're a member of the Public Accounts Committee. Um, uh, no, 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 no. The, until recently. It, until recently. Yeah. Okay, which, so you are no more... Yeah, I'm now on previously. appointments committee. Okay, great. Mm. But within the period, 2013, 2014, yeah. 2015, yeah. Yeah, you were a member. Yeah. Okay. There's a committee that has been put together by the Auditor General. Mm. There's a committee made up of 16 mm. and others, including him, now 17, of lawyers, of accountants, auditors, etc. Mm. They're supposed to find out within those reports, those three years of the Auditor General's report, how they can retrieve monies and also... Um, activate the laws of Ghana. The, um, we, okay, we have Ohim Interia. Um, he's our correspondent who has visited Dentra Obwasi. Uh, he brought us those uh, live feeds um, of the um, videos or the pictures that we have from Dentra Obwasi. Good morning to you, Ohiming. Good morning, Ohiming. Okay, so we'll try and re-establish him again. That we, we know that uh, a captain of the Ghana Army uh, was lynched or mobbed to death at uh, a town called Dentra Obwasi. And we're told that he had led a team of army personnel there. They'd been stationed there for, uh, I, I don't know whether days or some weeks now. Uh, he's called Captain Mahama. The late Captain Mahama was linked to death. Uh, he survived by, we're told, uh, two children and a wife, Suramin, Suramin. Um, the young captain. I think it's a Very sad incident there. Um, but there are questions that are also being asked whether in one vein um, Suramin. some of his attackers would be attacked as being know him at all, whether he was mm. not familiar um, with the people who also attacked him. Uh, it's a very sad story. Already mm. we're told that the chief of family staff and uh, defense staff, they're all there. Uh, they are taking a trip there today to also go and uh, do some reconnaissance and find out 
um, for themselves what may have happened. Uh, they have the other pictures of, of him also on the internet and on social media. It's a very sad incident. Uh, what will happen to the family? And we're taking a break. We'll be right back.